Quick warning. Some of my drawings here are horror related, but nothing too graphic. Dynamic poses. Being a self-taught artist, a lot of my learning process has come from many tutorials from amazing artists who shared their own tips and tricks online. So in an effort to not repeat all the tips that have already been taught and expanded upon better than I could ever do so, I will share the free things that I always try to remember in creating dynamic poses, making them able to work no matter what style you're using. Part 1. Character One of the issues I see people have difficulty with in dynamic posing is maintaining the essence of a character itself. It's either you showcase a character's design, sacrificing an awesome pose, or vice versa. Here are the three things that help me in maintaining my character's personalities when I'm posing. Number 1. Consistency keys. I'm sure there's an actual term for it, but consistency keys is what I'm going to call it for now. <laughs> it's about finding the specific parts of your character that make them instantly recognizable. You see this all the time in most iconic characters in history, but for copyright reasons, I won't be showing them, so <laughs> here are my own characters instead. This is Mary. And she's an original character I've had since 2017. At the time I first created her, there wasn't much thought of any storyline, just personality. And while I cringe at the original takes I had before her in the beginning, you could clearly still find consistency between all these poses. I did that by honing on several things. Her top hat, her clothes, and her spirally hair. All these little things add up to a nice recognizable silhouette, which is the number one thing you have to keep in mind for character design. What not to do is to prioritize detail over the silhouette, like this old drawing I did way back in 2010. But that doesn't say that detail is bad. If emphasizing details is part of your style, then by all means emphasize away. In fact, this drawing was inspired by one of my favorite artists growing up, Hello Baby. I'll link to her in it or him. Them. I'll link to them in the description down below. Their work is chock full of detail, but it never takes away from the actual silhouette of the subject of the piece. This old drawing was me trying to emulate their style, but at the time I didn't understand line weight and line economy as much as I do now. So the details I used just became so much noise and while you could technically see a recognizable silhouette, I think it could have been done better. Here's a quick exercise. It's best to learn how to practice this with real people as well. So using these photos of yours truly, what shapes could you immediately identify as the consistency keys? Please excuse the blurred out book covers. Gotta be good with the copyright gods. <laughs> Just at an initial glance, you have the squiggly hair, the poofy sleeves, and the lanky legs. Draw those three things, even exaggerate them for stylization if you want, and they are sure to be recognizable. Subpart 2 Construction Next, you'll want to get your fundamental knowledge about drawing 3D objects down. Because a lot of character construction is just understanding how basic 3D shapes work. In our examples here, this is one year later from my first creation of Mary. I had been busy with work, but at the time, I took the opportunity to pursue learning anatomy and stylization. Since this was going to be my first real drawing of her one year later, I wanted to actually find her core slash center. So keeping in mind the keys I mentioned before, I redrew her in a more realistic approach, but stylized. <laughs> this was the Mary that finally got me thinking of a storyline. Oftentimes, construction exploration and characters can lead to some great opportunities. Other than finding out what shape their nose is like from all different angles, what are certain emotions that your OC can express? When looking forwards, they could be flirty, sideways, curious, but looking down, perhaps pensive or even tired, and looking up? That's completely up to you. Here are examples of what not to do. This is one of my earliest drawings I could find dating all the way back to 2009. Yes, you could clearly see the style inspiration from anime, but with the big eyes, the pointy facial features that sit on a head that is way too disproportionate from the very flat body, and of course, the very unnatural and unnecessary posing going around. Of course, there are many areas of improvement in this drawing, but what I'd like you to take away from this is to not use the age-old excuse of it's my style. Yes, you could argue that maybe this drawing could be a style on its own, 
but since I'm the one who made it, I'm saying no. I was clearly very young then, a baby artist that didn't know much and that's okay because I was definitely excited to draw and I hadn't stopped drawing since. A lot of veteran artists and just creatives in general give the age-old tip that is practice, practice, practice. But let's break that down a little bit. Time affords us the opportunity to learn from our mistakes, to practice, practice, practice. But most of the time, we think about it as the physical act of doing. That's why, to some budding artists, hearing the phrase could become a deterrent instead of providing hope. After all, wasn't it Einstein that said that insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result? No, actually, it wasn't Einstein. It was Rita Mae Brown, an amazing mystery novelist who wrote this specific quote as one of her character's quotes in her 1983 book called Sudden Death. Thought you should know. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that the other half of practice, practice, practice is using your mind. Look at a random object near you. Observe how it looks from one specific viewpoint. Then you grab the object and observe how it looks on all sides and all angles. That, my friend, is observing 2D and 3D perspectives. Keep that in mind, add it to your mental library, and soon enough, by connecting your observations to your sketching, it will become more intuitive with time. Quick exercise. Using these two totally hyped poses, observe how the limbs work. Using cylinders, circles, or whatever shapes you can find, break down the construction of these poses in 3D space and try finishing the pose using only your shapes. Subpart 3, Contrast. Here's the fun part. Line of action. We all know this. We've heard of it time and time again. Makes dynamic poses go whoosh. But what if you don't want to make poses go whoosh? What if you want pose to just stay still? Contrasting shifts of body parts is where it's at. Take a look back at this pose from before. See how the right fist goes up with the left leg? That's contrast right there. Our bodies have weight, which is affected by gravity. So our bodies naturally compensate for shifts in our weight so that we don't fall face first because of gravity. It's why we naturally walk with opposite arms and legs and trying to walk with the same arm and leg feels unstable. Interestingly enough, Contrast makes more relaxed dynamic poses still look dynamic anyway. It's about finding the natural straight and curve in a pose and applying them as they would naturally occur. The best way of sometimes doing this is to simply do it yourself or look to others and observe if they could do it. Afterward, when you've got the relaxed poses down, then you can try bending the rules a little bit. For example, here are two more of my OCs, a merman and a lynx lady. They're designed to intentionally have very contrasting body parts, and that's part of why I love them so much. The merman has its upper body that has the general mobility of a human male torso, with the limitations of its bones, joints, muscles, etc. But the tail is fluid, thus giving more opportunities to create contrasting shapes, both in action and inaction, and vice versa for the lynx lady. With her, I wanted her body parts to be more angular, and yet create an illusion of curvature. It makes a very fun challenge for posing and contrasts nicely with the merman. Speaking of which, another thing you can do is to add contrast and characters posing next to each other. That way, it gives off a feeling of fitting in each other's space like pieces of a puzzle, or even vice versa. Here's an example of what not to do. Alright, this regarding the fact that this OC has six fingers, which he doesn't. The main issue was that I took contrast to the extreme. Our heads cannot turn that way unless our shoulders turn to compensate for it. But at the time, this pose was so common in anime, I literally have at least two old fan art drawings that I can't show because of copyright reasons, but they're doing the same neck cracking motion. Here is the same OC drawn a year later, and sure, there's clearly been some learning done, but both in fancy smancy text and interesting contrast. But contrast for the sake of contrast doesn't work as well in the context of her character. It has no value whatsoever. Plus, her character design overall is just suffering a little too much with details that at the time I thought were cool, but now I just think are too much. But don't worry, high contrasting poses still work, no matter what style you use. 
Great examples of these are present in manga like Soul Eater, My Hero Academia, and Attack on Titan. With specific artists, Dara Chu's work on all things Harley Quinn or Art Germs on Catwoman. I'll link their profiles down below or you can just google them yourselves. As an exercise, here's a very old fan art I did of an OC belonging to one of my longtime favorite artists. Sean Healy. I found him during the prime age of DeviantArt and I'm definitely linking him below because I just found out that he's a CGMA instructor now. That's amazing. I was really proud of this piece at the time because it was the first big contrasting pose I've ever done and that's also thanks to the character itself. Her arsenal is this uh, giant saw blade weapon so it takes a big swing to move. But beneath all the cool getup, try to see the pose underneath. How is her upper body twisted in relation to her lower body? Where are her arms? Her shoulders? Could you push this pose more to heighten the anticipation? Part 2. Composition Most of you have already heard of this term in the environment art world or cinematography, or at least that's where I first heard of it. But composition itself simply means putting together. And when it comes to dynamic posing, it's putting together everything that was mentioned above in a way that naturally flows through your art. Make your character silhouette distinct with the consistency keys. Keep in mind the construction of your character's body. What not to do is to have elements that contradict themselves. Here are some pieces I did in 2011, and I'm pretty sure you can see what I mean. With the chocolate one, even disregarding the bad values going around, zoom in. Focusing on the girl, there's, there's just no way that she's remaining balanced as she is with how her legs and feet are bent. And how her upper body is leaning away, away with her arms tucked in. I tried doing it myself and no, I will not be showing documentation of that. But basically, her pose is impossible unless she's just naturally flexible with her feet, ankles, and have impeccable core strength. And then the second one. Oof. While I do still think that this character design is cool, the consistency keys are there. The, the contrast, the construction, sort of. It just doesn't work. Same as the chocolate one. Sure, it fits the old style of shoujo manga, which I was heavily influenced by back in the day, but all these inconsistencies end up making it look like quirkiness for the sake of being quirky. And I don't want that. Now, by this point, you might be thinking, hey, it's natural to look back at old baby art and cringe at all the mistakes you've made. That is true. But it doesn't mean we can't backslide and make the same mistakes again. Case in point, here is a self-portrait I made last 2019. I do, not, I do not like this at all. But at the time, I did. So much so that I even turned it into a YouTube banner. Now though, when I look at it, I can't help but feel how wrong it feels. Yes, you've got your keys, your construction, your contrast, but composition? All of these elements working as a unit, it feels wrong. Compared to a much earlier self-portrait I did two years before, this one feels much better. But why? If anything, there were a lot of improvements on the fundamentals in the 2019 one, but the 2017 one still feels right. Why? Well, <laughs> that's what our last and I think the most important part of dynamic posing is about topic is about English. And yet I don't see many people discussing it. You've probably already caught it mentioned once or twice here actually. So part three context. Of course, we're going to start with the handy dandy Merriam Webster definition first, which states that context is parts of a discourse that surround a word or passage and can throw light on its meaning or the interrelated conditions in which something exists or occurs. And with drawing dynamic poses, that basically translates to does your pose actually fit the scenario it's being used in? I know it sounds very rhetorical. Your answer is obviously going to be yes, because it's your character and no one else is going to know them better than you. But that's just the thing. You don't. Or at least not immediately. When you're at a point where you can naturally think about your OC's every reaction to forces that come for them, then you're on top of your game. Case in point, look at every single piece I mentioned in the what not to do sections. All of them miss that one important thing. 
context. Heck, I'll add even more. These were freebies I did for other people's OCs back in 2020 and they look so flat and straight when I really thought they looked cool at the time. And here was an old group commission from 2014 and they were all supposed to be superheroes, sure, but they all didn't have to have one knee up, which was not something my commissioner specifically asked for by the way, but they were so nice. And this princess looking one was a birthday gift from my best friend, bless her soul, and there's absolutely no context other than she's some birthday princess. But the worst has to be this one from 2011, where he's supposed to be in some giant ice cream sundae world, and he's doing that same quirky feet are twisted pose. It's all just... Uh, here is what you should do. Number one, know the purpose of your pose. These poses were meant to showcase the personality of each of my characters with just one look. And these poses were meant to showcase the actual anatomy behind their impossible feats. And these poses were meant to make you tense and wonder what on earth is going to happen next. And all of that was from 2017. Man, I miss those OCs. Let me know if you'd like to see more of them because it's been so long since I've thought about them and seeing them now gives me the warm fuzzies. But I digress. It's good to think beforehand about your reasoning behind the pose. Sure, if the pose looks awesome, the character has reason to do it, and the camera angle is sick, by all means, do it. I'm basically describing the superhero landing at this point, so of course you have to. Right? Well, yes and no. Let's look back at this piece before. The reason why it doesn't work, other than the weird composition, is because its main purpose was to represent who I was and my overall go with the flow, pretty laid back, but also with a bit of anxiety on the inside kind of vibe at the time. While it might be doing that job technically correct, what it used to represent is no longer accurate because I've changed. And now this just feels like starting at a bad AI rendition of what a perfect artist persona I would be. And the second thing that comes hand in hand, does it elevate your piece? Again, it's a pretty obvious thing, but in my case, as you've seen from all of the old art I've shown you, it can be easy to forget. I could be spending so many hours trying to nail a really cool pose from a really cool angle, tearing my hair out to make sure the foreshortening and the proportions are right, but when it comes down to it, how much time are people going to spend looking at that specific image? And how much of an impact do you think will it make? If your answer to both questions is, not very, then, my friend, you may want to consider trying a different pose entirely. Something that gets the same emotion across from the character, and also what you want the viewer to feel when they look away. And vice versa is true. If you feel like a character has the potential to become great with a really fun, dynamic pose, which serves their story and is achievable in your current skill level, then go! Do it! Do some thumbnails, get your character's anatomy down, and make them shine. In conclusion, what makes dynamic poses work the best based on what I've observed as a self-taught artist is that sure, getting your fundamentals down in character and design and understanding contrast and composition is vital. But I would like to argue that context is the real key here and your careful use of dynamic poses in the best moments of a story matters. Know when to hold back a cool pose if it's only making the rest of your progress suffer, so that when you do use them, the moment stands out and becomes much more memorable. Unless if it's for a comedic effect, or the context of the characters are that constant dynamic poses are natural. Those are pretty awesome too, and I think you already know which stories I'm talking about. In that case, more power to you. Thank you so much for watching. The article version of this video is in the links below. And if you'd like me to do more videos about the original characters mentioned in this video, make sure to leave it down in the comments. Especially since May is coming up soon, and that old abandoned crocodile girl drawing from a previous mermaid is right there ready to be finished. All the art scrolling past are previous pieces that were generously gifted to me over the years. I still love and cherish them to this day. Thanks for watching, and take care. Bye!